So partner in crime of only send what you need to is uh, from the recipient point of view, the option and the kind of freedom to get what you ask for, because uh, we do hear a common feedback, let's say, of, wow, Speckle's got so much data and oh my God, Speckle's got so much data. Uh, I'm, I'm overwhelmed, I've got too much. I'm overloading my power query. I'm overloading my uh, web application script. It's just too much because we keep adding the facility that uh, everything everyone wants. Everyone wants the data that's important to them, uh, added it to our connectors and our SDKs. So we're happily providing that. Luckily, we also have the facility that you can actually uh, ask, uh, get what you need. Uh, and this is a commonly used uh, API interface called GraphQL. I won't go into exactly uh, its origins, um, but suffice to say, it is a, a query language, just like SQL, um, that allows uh, three, uh, or at least the way that we're uh, implementing GraphQL, three different facilities. So you can query data, you can mutate data, and you can subscribe to data. So subscription is, is a really important aspect of the way that our web front end works, for instance. So when an object ha changes on the server, it actually, the, the front end is subscribing to those changes and is able to respond to that directly. Uh, you have similar kind of paradigms uh, with uh, Superbase, which uh, was being demonstrated earlier in the kind of live coding demo and a number of other real-time uh, databases. I'm gonna talk about queries because it's uh, get what you ask for. And every aspect, every piece of data that we have in Speckle is queryable with our GraphQL API. So you can query not only about projects, streams, and objects of data, but actually details about the server itself, uh, applications that are running on the server, the users that are um, registered on your server, the state of those users, what they've been up to um, for uh, building project management tools, for instance. Uh, what I haven't added to the slide, and I probably should have, is that every aspect of what Automate does is also queryable. So you can query the results, you can query how often it's run, you can query how often it failed, and start to build potentially dashboards of your own automations uh, to find um, kind of trends, like a, a data quality checker that's running every every week or on every commit or whenever it, ever it is, you can see it getting better, hopefully, um, over over time. Uh, within stream data, there's, uh, I'm sorry, project data, there is model data, version data, objects. Uh, obviously, adjacent to that is also the commenting facility that we have. And uh, another thing that been, has been added over the last 12 months, uh, a blob support. And uh, that blob is uh, an artifact or a binary file, uh, images and text, uh, you know, PDFs, etc. So to get into the kind of nitty gritty of what a, a GraphQL query looks like, uh, this is the most commonly for, uh, experienced uh, query should you have touched GraphQL API. And effectively, you can read it as a human, I think. Uh, I am going to query project ID this. I'm from that project, I'm going to ask for versions. And I want, uh, of those versions, I want items. And the items are, all of these things are predefined in the, in the API. Uh, typically, it was the same for commits, and it's now the same for versions. The only thing that a commit is, is a package of data. And so we have metadata about that package, which is when it was created, what message that you wrote in inside the, uh, like in the Rhino connector, saying uh, 75 items sent from Rhino, uh, what the application was that sent it, um, and then the referenced object. So the, that packet then points to the, the actual uh, version data. And on the on the right hand side, effectively, the point of the GraphQL uh, API is that you structure what it is that you want to get out at the end. So your query is also the uh, the shape of the data that you want to receive. And as you break uh, go further down, once you have that uh, sorry to come back that referenced object ID, that is the pointer to the package of all of the data that you can get uh, from that particular version. And inside that, uh, we've talked about traversal, we talked about flattening, and talked about the hierarchy. Uh, that object has children, and it goes on forever and ever, nested, 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 nested. And the query is, get all of the objects of the children from that commit, that version. Uh, and the endpoint always for us uh, for object data is 
a data object. The responsibility of your application or your um, your web app, your uh, you know tool that you're building is always then to re uh, respond to what that data object has. That is still a lot of data. So the reason why I'm talking to you about this now is that we can actually, at the server level, put the instruction to the server or to the database, I only am interested in certain things. So even before you get to um, building your uh, door counting application, you can actually specify, I actually am only interested in doors. So there's no need to build that logic into your application. We can actually do that at the database layer. Um, if I'm only actually interested in the last 10 doors or the last 10 branches or the last 10 versions that have been sent to the server, I can limit on that basis. I can also say, based on that, uh, the, the traversal hierarchy, I only want to go too deep, 10 deep, 10, 20 deep. It's a never, it's a never ending, not never ending. It's a, a kind of an infinitely uh, deep possible hierarchy that can be sent. Uh, having worked on Navisworks, that's incredibly deep hierarchies. Um, the depth you can say, I actually only want to go two children deep or down to kind of great grandchild. And the most powerful thing that we're going to demonstrate here is the uh, the query, which is going to do uh, sort of the, the checks of what it is that I want to get. And also of the objects that are returned by that query, what, is, what are the properties that I want to be returned? And then after that, the objects data is the structure that you can get to go to. So I will do, it's a sort of live coding demo. Let's have a look. Okay. And I will zoom in a bit. Okay. So every Speckle server that is deployed by us, and also if you're self-deploying, uh, has access to a GraphQL uh, Explorer, which is kind of a user-friendly version, and then there's a Power version, which is the uh, the raw Apollo uh, querying engine. And this is the thing that's powering all of the queries that come from our connectors for, from Speckle data, uh, and this is a, a user interface for it. Uh, it's super handy and super useful to explore and uh, craft your queries because it's got a live uh, live uh, API doc documentation that is interactive. Uh, so this query here has been uh, constructed by literally pointing and clicking. I want to commit a uh, stream, I want commits, I want items, and of those items, I want the ID and the reference object. So I can build my query just by pointing and clicking. Ultimately then, uh, you have this is a, a stream query that's still on the old nomenclature. And the only uh, information I need to send to that query is the stream ID. And if I press play, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm now updating. And since I last did that query, another version has been uh, sent to Speckle. Uh, when I'm querying versions or I'm querying commits, the first object is always uh, the, the latest. And it's possible in this query language to um, change that if I wanted to. Uh, we can do uh, change the order. We can do some filtering at, the, at this level. Uh, but mostly, we want to get, get to get to the object data. So you can see there's that referenced object ID. I can pass that into the next query. So again, passing stream ID, object ID, and then the, passing the, uh, that query. So once we have that object, we can then say, start to give me my uh, the, the children of that. And as you uh, press play or uh, make that query, then you can start getting into that experience of, oh my gosh, there's an awful lot of data, isn't there? So this is where, yes, you can consume that entire JSON blob. It's a large amount of data to have in your in your kind of applications memory, particularly if you're building uh, tools for your organization to be running on mobile. You probably don't want to be doing that. Um, you want to be a lot more responsive. So there's a couple of ways that we can uh, limit what you're getting back. First is the, uh, the what the, on this uh, depth query on the children. So I'm only wanting to go, uh, there's the root object, and I only want to go one deep. So that's a depth of two. And what you can see here is part of the way that the speckle magic works is that actually inside that casework object uh, is all of the things that are the casework uh, you know, the, the cupboards and the, uh, the furniture, etc. But all I'm getting back is a reference ID. So theoretically, that would be an address that I can then pass to my next query. Uh, if I increase the depth, 
of that query, what will happen is that the server and the database will actually populate all of those reference IDs with the object that it represented. So you only actually have to do one query, but it gets us back to that point where we've got oodles of data. So the next example that we're going to produce here. So having controlled the depth, we can now put a query. So query, as I said, is uh, being very specific or increasingly specific about what you're interested in. So we have that large amount of data, which is everything. Uh, and what we can specify uh, in query is what I'm saying here is I want everything that is a wall. Uh, this is specifically Revit data. Uh, Revit, I'll say, has categories. It has types and families. What we're going to look at is I want to return all of the walls. So one of the things that I can do in here is just to work out exactly what uh, um, I'm getting back is I'm going to keep track of this property, which is called total count. And it's actually going to tell me exactly how many items I'm getting. By default, uh, every query will come back with 100. And then that will give you, uh, at the end of that 100, it will give you a pointer to the next 100. Uh, if you really want to uh, kind of stress things out, uh, you can say uh, limit a million. And then you'll get, it'll take a bit longer, but literally however many, uh, well, it was 700 or so. Very large response. OK, can't deal with that. So let's not do that too often. Uh, but what you can do inside your application that is making these queries is that you can have it recursively make further uh, server queries. That was still, even though we've limited it to now just walls, uh, it's still quite a lot of data. Uh, so what I want to return is uh, on that select query, as I can say, actually, of those walls, I'm only interested in what wall type they are, uh, so a sort of common, a common query of uh, uh, Revit data. I want to know how many how many different unique types there are, or if, if there is a if I'm doing a door schedule, how many of door type A there is. Um, we can't do a query that specifies at that kind of granularity. I only want um, unique types. You will get the big list, but what we can do is completely finesse the list that you get back. So on making that query, you can see i have now only receiving just walls and just the name of those walls and its speckle type. And because we have that data, what we can do is kind of enhance that query and say, actually, I was only interested in knowing how many of wall vinyl type five millimeters there is in the project or how many of door type X uh, I, I do have in the project. So that's a, a way that if you're building a mobile app or something like that, you can immediately get the incredibly precise and uh, responsive answers. Uh, and that will play into um, wherever you want to query your data. And also, uh, we can compound a bit like I was saying with the checks earlier, you can com compound all of these queries. So only walls, only of wall, vinyl, five mil, and only the ones on level one. And obviously, levels are a special property. They have an elevation above zero. You could actually give a height range. You can say greater than zero, less than four meters. So you can actually find objects within a volume. And actually, if I'm only interested in that type and only interested in just the parameters that that object has, uh, I can now limit it to uh, one object. And that's particularly useful. So if I now say, not only do I want the family type and the level name, I will change here and I'll say, I want the parameters of that object. So I'm now getting the wall and all of the parameters that are of that wall. And beyond that, I can also say, oh, not that I'm not sure that that will be a particularly useful query to make, but it's the first one that's visible. I can say, I only want the IFC GUID of a wall type of uh, five millimeter vinyl. And so that my query now is in, just visibly was incredibly responsive. It's a very small uh, data pa uh, package. And yeah, this is how you get what you want. And I will come back to my slides. And this repeats it. So those great GraphQL queries that's really fun to play, well, fun, it's really fun to play with in the, uh, in the Explorer. Those you can actually craft there and you can pass that query into our SDKs. And so that's available, obviously, as a GraphQL, uh, a, a, a REST 
a body uh, payload that you can send, which is a REST query from a web application or any uh, program language that understands making REST calls, but actually hardwired into our C Sharp SDK and into our uh, SpecklePy SDK are these ways of passing the, uh, the data. And the reason why I was highlighting the, uh, the variables is because every, every part of that query is parameterizable. <laughs> And that makes it incredibly powerful because then you can build your own user interface on top of uh, those uh, GraphQL kind of parameters. And on that basis, I will be talking now with Alan, and he's going to be demonstrating how we've added this uh, GraphQL facility into Power BI.